Good morning, this is Cody. I'm coming to you from my kitchen floor because it is gardening season and my house is a wreck because I'm spending all my time outside. I wanted to talk to you today about something that I haven't seen discussed on social media regarding this year and GMO seeds, uh, gem genetically modified seeds that have had DNA from somewhere else inserted into them. Prior to this year, GMO seeds were not available to the home consumer, to, to the private gardener or a small market gardener. It was something that commercial agriculture did. Um, the big farms, like when you go out into the Midwest in the U.S. and there's just corn as far as the eye can see, and the farm machinery that's as big as my house, that was the kind of farm that would be under contract with a lab to grow GMO seeds. And it was usually things like corn or um, soybeans. There, at one point in the 90s, there was a tomato called Flavor Saver that was GMO, but it wasn't, it, it didn't, didn't do well. They pulled it. It wasn't worth creating because there is expense in um, growing. Uh, in creating these GMOs because it's a lab. It, you know, think the cost of drug development. Um, but at the beginning of 2024, a purple tomato called the purple tomato was approved for sale to the um, home gardener. It was developed in the UK by a company called Norfolk Healthy Produce. And what it is, is a, it's a tomato. Uh, tomatoes have approximately 35,000 genes and two genes from a Snapdragon were inserted into it in order to make the entire tomato purple. And because I keep getting this confused, this is a Snapdragon. It's a flower. I keep getting it confused with dragonflies, which is a bug. Don't ask. My brain is a very odd place. Um, now, when I refer to facts about Norfolk and what happened, I'm referencing an NPR article by Sasa Woodruff, um, published on April 28th, 2024. So, if the purple tomato was made available to sale, at the beginning of 2024 and there's already a problem end of April that's like four months so this is something serious because it you know can happen so quickly now I'm gonna be mentioning a specific seed company in this I am NOT bashing them do not go dogpile them they were a victim here um, I actually have bought seeds from them. I will be growing them in my fall garden. These seedlings have already been planted a second batch because I managed to cook my first one by forgetting it was in the porch. Um, so don't go after them, please. Behave yourselves. Um, but at the beginning of this year, Baker Creek sent out its seed catalog. And on the back cover is the Truly Purple Tomato Purple Galaxy, the Sweet Purple Superfruit Tomato. Now, purple tomatoes have been a thing for years. Um, people have crossed tomatoes to the point where there are enough anthocyanins in it that when exposed in the sun, the flesh, like the skin of the tomato turns blue, black, purple. And anthocyanins, if you're curious, it's the compound that's naturally found in things like blueberries that um, get them flagged as superfoods. But they look, you know, purple skin tomatoes look really cool. You can, Baker Creek sells and has sell, sold for years a variety called Black Beauty which I have also bought seeds for. I was planning to plant them in the spring, discovered that 
Um, eating tomatoes in any kind of quantity gives me a chemical burn on my tongue, so that will probably be reevaluated. But, you know, has a great reputation. Black Beauty was on a lot of um, people's favorite seed lists that I saw when I was researching gardening this past year, this past winter. This is technically my second year of gardening, but it's the first year that I've had any success. We have been drowning in cherry tomatoes. Luckily, I've been taking them to work and my coworkers are absolutely in love with them. And <laughs> we'll just sit there and pop them, like, you know, eat them like popcorn until they're gone, which unfortunately there's not that many per day. But yeah, I'm harvesting, I'm harvesting a small bowl full every day. Um, and the type I'm growing is a hybrid. Hybrids and GMOs are not the same. A hybrid is where you cross two different cultivars of tomatoes. Um, so it's the same thing as if you have a German Shepherd who has puppies with a Rottweiler, you know? It happened naturally. No lab was involved, no test tubes, no pipettes, nothing like that. Um, a GMO is done in a lab. I know there's a lot of confusion about that. Hybrids are not a bad thing. Um, today's hybrid, if it's stabilized to where it can reproduce the same kind, the same fruit over and over again for multiple generations, will turn into tomorrow. You know, our grand, our kids' heirlooms. Um, but anyways, back to purple tomato. So Baker Creek sells this tomato, which note the flesh is purple, not just the skin. And Norfolk sees the seed catalog and goes, that's our tomato. <laughs> How did you get our tomato? You know, you're, you're a, a rare seed company and this wasn't released for sale until this year. And obviously, you know, the catalog is copyrighted for 20, 2022, 23, 24. Um, they would have been printing the catalog before the start of 2004. They would have sourced the seeds and received you know, them in bulk from the farmer um, the year before, at least, if not more. And Baker Creek goes, we got this from a hobby farmer in France. Now, most countries in Europe will not allow GMO seeds, not even commercially. So you have a lab in the UK Seeds being sold in the U.S., I'm not sure if it's available in any other country, and a hobby farmer in France. How did Baker Creek get a hold of this? How did the farmer in France get a hold of this? And now when Baker Creek saw this guy's tomatoes and went, that is super cool, uh, they tested for genes that are commonly found in GMO seeds, like common markers. They didn't think to test for Snapdragon seeds or Snapdragon DNA. Why would they? You know, it's 2022 or 2023, <laughs> maybe even earlier. But then they do, you know, they do testing and they never said what the results were but they pulled all of the purple galaxy seeds and destroyed them. So we have to assume that they were the purple tomato that Norfolk Lab had developed. And obviously given how litigious today's society is, they didn't want to open themselves up to lawsuits by admitting that it was the purple tomato. And, but, you know, how would they have even guessed? <laughs> you know, Brad at Wild Boar Farms, he comes up with crazy tomato crosses, you know, that are black, blue, you know, berries, crazy cherry, and um, the cosmic purple. So actually I think that's a carrot. Anyways, you know, 
purple vegetables exist. You know, you can grow them and save the seeds and grow them again. No problem. But, uh, so this was not Baker Creek's fault. You know, this is not Norfolk's fault, honestly. And then the question became, how did seeds from a lab in the UK get to France in the first place? You know, with corn here in the Midwest, if you're growing corn, you know, you're a little market farmer and you're growing corn and it's an heirloom variety or it's a nat you know a hybrid variety putnet squares crossing you know like you learned in science you learned in um elementary school and middle school science th that kind of hybrid and you're next to one of those massive commercial farms there's the risk that the pollen from the corn next door could blow downwind to your corn and cross pollinate and you get a you get GMO DNA in your corn. There's always that risk, but tomatoes don't pollinate like that. Um, most tomato seeds that volunteer that um, are carried by birds or animals usually in their poop. Um, so what had to have happened was someone, the Norfolk lab, during the development process of this purple tomato, which took years, um, manipulating DNA is not something that, you know, just takes a couple of months, took some of the seeds, went, this is super cool, took some of the seeds home. Their neighbor was like, man, that's awesome. Can I have some of the seeds? So at the end of the season, they gave the seeds to the neighbor and the neighbor shared them with their cousin, who's an avid gardener in France. And suddenly you have this GMO tomato has been released into the greater world without any way to track it. And it turns up in an heirloom seed company's stock in the Midwest of the U.S. And, you know, it's two genes that change the color. You know, it comes from another plant. It just turns the tomato purple. That's it. But at one point, companies were investigating, you know, researching if they could, in a financially viable way, sterilize GMO crops. What if one of, you know, if if it becomes financially viable, you know, worth it to them monetarily to do that in the future, what if those sterilization genes escape into the regular, you know, seeds that the rest of us buy? Um, what if, you know, they start creating seeds that you can't save? Um, you can't grow the plant and save the seeds and then grow it again the next year without buying from them. So this is, you know, this has always been something that has been heavily debated. And it's a, it's a slippery slope. And we've started to go down it. And the consequences showed up in four months. You know, within four months of us knowing about this, from this product being released. So I think we need to be really careful and we need to vote where we can with our dollars. And if you are one of those um, people that do political lobbying, go ahead and lobby your represent your congressperson, your congress critter. <laughs> I forget who in my friend's circle calls them that, but um, lobby against GMOs and even for commercial agriculture. And, um, cause it's, it, it's an unsustainable way of growing anyways, but I'm saying this, but I'm also saying grow what seeds you can get, um, buy from the big box stores, even if they're coming from companies that do have an agricultural division that develops GMOs and sells them, um, if that's the only seed you can get, grow it. If the only seed you can get is from the dollar store, grow it. 
if you go to a restaurant and the tomatoes, the little salad at tomatoes in your um, appetizers, or not your app, your starter salad, um, the thing that comes out before the main course, if you like them, you know, take some of the seeds, cut one open, stick some of the seeds in a damp napkin, take them home in your purse, grow them. Um, because they are not sterile. After 2020, um, people would say post-pandemic. I'm not going to say that because I know like 10 people right now that have COVID. Um, but after COVID became a thing and people saw grocery store shelves bare, um, there's been a lot of pushing, you know, a lot of feeling to get back into growing our own food. So grow food at home. Use that as a way to vote against GMO seeds. But again, do not go after Baker Creek. Um, I have to you know, contribute most of the the hard up facts um, that I've mentioned to Sasa Woodruff at NPR. Um, please continue to write about this topic and keep yourself safe out there and maybe think about sticking your hands in the dirt if you haven't done it already because this may be my second year, my first successful year of gardening, but I'm finding it very satisfying. Even, I mean, even with the food that I can't eat because my, I'm, I don't know if I'd call it an allergy, but even growing food that I can't eat has been very rewarding. And the whole process, um, the interaction with other people, whether my co-workers who have never held, you know, never picked up a seed packet in their life, but have been supportive, and other gardeners that I have learned so much from. So take care of yourselves. Bye.